text is in Hebrews uh, chapter 8 and, um, and verse uh, 2. But verse 1, of course, starts out, Of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum, we have a great high priest who is set down at the right hand of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary, and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. That's our text. That's the second verse. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. That's what we want to work over tonight. Now here, the, let's just talk about this uh, minister of the sanctuary. Now, he who was the, uh, the servant of Jehovah in, uh, in Isaiah's prophecy, this is, uh, this is found in the Isaiah chapter 40 uh, up through uh, chapters uh, 53 and 54, I believe. Uh, where that where he's mentioned several times there the servant of the Lord or the servant of Jehovah this servant of Jehovah is the minister of the sanctuary so this is the same one see he's a servant he was the servant of Jehovah right and now he's the minister of the sanctuary now I, I want to talk about the uh, the matter of the true tabernacle okay so now, true in the Bible, a lot of t most of the time is in reference, uh, in in contrast with false. Okay, and uh, but here in this case, true is not uh, that, that it's different. In this case, true is uh, in contrast with that which is uh, passing away. See, the, uh, the 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 true tabernacle is the one that was foreshadowed. It was foreshadowed under the law by the, uh, you know, in the you know by the. Uh, the the, the tabernacle in the in the wilderness, right, and that was uh, in in the in the days of uh, the children of Israel. But this is the true tabernacle, right? So it's this is true in in comparison with uh, the shadow, mm -hmm. true and shadow instead of true and false. Can you see that how we're yeah. comparing those two thoughts there? Okay, so and then this matter which the Lord pitched and not man. We're going to work that over towards the end. The Lord pitched this. Uh, the Lord is the one who pitched this. Now here, what, let's just clarify. Let's, let's just look, clarify the persons of the Godhead here, okay? So we, in the, the minister of the sanctuary, of course, is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord that we're speaking of here at the end, this is referring to God the Father or, or Jehovah, the eternal self-existent one. That's who we're talking about. They're talking about the Lord Jehovah. See, he's the one who pitched this tabernacle, see, this, this, this tabernacle originated in the purpose of God, see, it came from God, see, this was God's, this was of God's origin, see, and so, uh, it, now it's important, it's important that you're, that you're able to see that, that your faith is able to get a hold of that, that this actually all originated with God, see, it started out with God, see. Now, this, uh, this office of the minister was established by a divine decree and an oath. And that's found in Psalm 110 and verse 4. And uh, you know, this is a, a, po a portion of the scripture that all the people of God ought to be uh, acquainted with. You know, the uh, Psalm, Psalm 110 uh, particularly is, uh, is a very critical psalm. Actually, the book of Hebrews is built almost entirely upon Genesis chapter 14, that, that allusion to Melchizedek, and this, uh, this one verse in Psalm 110, verse 4, where God, the, Lord's, the Lord hath sworn and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. See, this is a, so this, this, was, this has been established by an oath, okay? The decree was not an afterthought in the working of God's purpose in salvation, but rather a forethought conceived in and proceeding from the divine wisdom and far-sightedness that the people that Christ would lay down his life for would stand in need of a high priest, a mediator, and an intercessor at the right hand of God to be able to succor them that are tempted to have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, and to make 
or effectualize reconciliation for the sins of the people. I want to talk about reconciliation here. You know, the, uh, in, the, in Romans chapter 5, and we've talked about this before in our assembly, but Romans chapter 5, among other places, in Colossians, we talk about, we talk about reconciliation in the sense of justification. We talk about re reconciliation in, some, in the sense of that this is something that God has already accomplished, see. Now there's a, and, that is, and that's one of the bedrock teachings of, of the scripture. See, our faith rests upon, we, we've been reconciled to God by the death of his son. See, that's, a, see, that's re that, that, reconci that reconciliation, this is, the, this is the foundation. See, this is at the very bedrock foundation, see. Now in Hebrews chapter 2, we're talking about the high priest. Now, if you're not able to see this, and I'm just asking you to think about it and, and search the scriptures daily and see if these things be so, and, and, if, and if it doesn't fit, well, then you just, then, uh, you know, I, I'm just, uh, the, you know, we, as the people of God, you ought to have enough interest in your soul to, uh, to, to, uh, to search out and s to search out things like this yes. and see if these things be true. Yeah. And see, and, and whether, whether I, I mean, uh, here, and I'm not proclaiming myself as to be anything. I really am not. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, who am I? But anyhow, I'm just, uh, but what I'm saying is, when, whenever somebody ministers the Word of God to you, it's, it's an incumbent upon you to search out what the person is saying and to see whether these things be so, oh, and, to, and to check these things out. This may be the only time you'll hear this. <coughs> this may be the last time in your life that you'll hear it. You may, you may make your appointment with, with the, uh, with, with the, with the, uh, the, with, with death, uh, you know, before you know it. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's continue on here. The duration and effectuality of this priestly office shall be never ending. Mm -hmm. Thou art a priest forever. Amen. Amen. He, now think about this. He, this is from Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. He whose goings forth yeah. have been from everlasting. Mm -hmm. They're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ here. That's, yeah. This is who he's talking about, right? <coughs> has been made to be this priest after the order of Melchizedek. In the eternal world to come, we shall ever be related to God Most High through our great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. See, this, this, is, this is never going to come to an end. See, See we'll always, you'll always stand in need of Jesus, even in the world to come, as your great high priest. See, remember it says there, in, I believe in Revelation 7, it says that the Lamb shall feed them and lead them yeah. unto living Amen. fountains of water. See, that's talking about the knowledge of God. See, we're not looking, we're not talking about H2O water. You see, we're, we're talking about water, like the water of life. See, we're, we're talking about that kind of water. See, so, uh, so anyhow, the, the lamb shall feed them, and he shall lead them unto living fountains of water. Christ is the king of righteousness. That's what Melchizedek means. That word Melchizedek means king of righteousness. And he was also, remember Melchizedek was king of Salem, which means king of peace. See, now I, I, really, I believe somebody else is going to minister on this, so I'm only going to touch on it, see, but, so I'm not going to steal your fire. So, uh, so long as this minister, Christ Jesus, is in heaven, salvation can and shall be effectually administered to those who are coming to God by him upon earth salvation that is even to the uttermost. See, that's what, that's what this priest is for. This priestly minister is also the king to whom all power in heaven and earth has been given to say that Christ shall sometime in the future set up a kingdom in Jerusalem and reign a thousand years upon the earth is not only dead wrong, but it's also a gross misapprehension of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and of the nature of his kingship and dominion and also of the purpose of God in salvation. For he must reign until he's put all enemies under his feet. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. To say that Christ will reign upon earth again in the future 
would mean that he would have to humble himself again, even now after having been exalted by the Father to his right hand, far above all principality and power, not only in this world, but also in the world to come, if somehow he were able to return to earth, as is very commonly taught today, then he could no longer be priest and would be unable to save to the uttermost them who are coming unto God by him. Any, any reasonable person would have to come to this conclusion. Can you, can you see what I'm saying? And if you haven't thought about these things, or if this is the first time you've heard this, I'm asking you to search this out. I, I really am, because this is very commonly taught that Jesus is going to come back and reign on the earth again, see, and, and uh, for a thousand years, you know. Well, this is just a lot of hogwash. It's just a lot of, it's not even worth your attention, see. It's, it's worth throwing in the garbage, see. That's, uh, that's what it's worth, see. In another, in another uh, verse in Acts chapter 3, verse 21, it says, Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of, or the restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So, in other words, Jesus isn't going to come back until everything has been restored that God has spoken about in the prophets. See? Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that we're placing a limitation upon Jesus. That isn't, but see, see, that isn't what we're saying at all. See, we're, what we're saying is this is the way God is working. See? Now, that, that, could, could, that could even... Maybe, see, God is able to work very quickly. See, he, a nation shall be born in a day. See, that's a, see God is able to do things very rapidly. So you, you know, so that you know, so that to think that, uh, to think that you, that we can borrow time. So we got plenty of time because it doesn't look like it's all been restored. Well, I'll just tell you, well, this could all be restored very quickly. See, so we don't want to, we don't want to presume upon God. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. See, that's a, that's a fundamental, that's a fundamental uh, exhortation in the Word of God. Christ himself, by virtue of his obedience to the Father and putting away sin by the sacrifice of himself, has become this sanctuary for believing men. Unlike the priest that served under the law, Christ is the chief servant of the sanctuary and in the sanctuary, but also by virtue of his own glorious person and work, he himself is the sanctuary. You know, in, the, in Isaiah, it says, and he shall be for a sanctuary. I believe that's cha Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 12. You can check me out on that one, but I, I didn't run that reference, but I'm pretty sure that's where that is. He is the express image of God's person, the brightness Amen. of his glory. Amen. Christ could not only, could not, be this sanctuary by virtue of his person alone, else there would not, there would be no need for him to suffer for sin. It was by his obedience, the obedience of one that many were made righteous, and we'll develop this uh, thought in just a few moments. I just want, this is a very critical thing to see about the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're going to touch on this, okay? We're going to deal with this, okay? But let's think about Christ in the tabernacle right now. Now, Christ and the tabernacle, as Brother Durante has already started talking about the, this matter of the, of the high priest and, and, and the sacrifice and how that Jesus had to be both, see, and he was, he perfectly, he was the fit man for, to be both of these things. And, 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 and but and I want to just carry this, uh, talk about this a little bit more. Christ is the door. Amen. He's the door of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Exodus 29.4. He is the door of the sheep. Mm -hmm. John 10, 7. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way you come in. Okay. Jesus is the way you come in. Okay. Right. He is the doorway into the presence yeah. of the eternal self-existent one, the Holy One, even Him whose name is Jehovah. Christ is the altar of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. His humanity was offered up upon the altar of his, for us all, on the altar of his divinity. Let me just say that again. In other words, it was only, it was only the Son of God that could have effectually 
offered up himself for us all. See, it had to be it had to be this one who was the Son of God. See, it had to be him. See, it, it had to be him, this this one who was the Son of God and also the Son of Man. He's the only one who qualified. See, so his his humanity was offered up. There was what altar? What, what other altar would he offer himself on? Is there any other altar? And you search and look. Search and look, and you can look all through the ramparts of heaven when you get there, and you, I'll, I'll just tell you there's not going to be any other altar. There's no, there's no other altar. See that? But see, he, off, he offered up himself. See, he off, This he did once when he offered up himself. Christ is the burnt offering. Genesis 22, 2. Christ is the peace offering. Christ is the heave offering. Christ is the wave offering. Christ is the ram of the consecration. Christ is the ram caught in the thicket by God by his horns. Think about that. This was in Genesis chapter 22 after Abraham was going to offer up Isaac. Remember there was that ram that was caught in the thicket. Well, Jesus was caught in the thicket of God's purpose. See, he was caught. He was the one. He was caught he, who else was going to who else was going to who else was going to be this one? Who else was going to be the one that would be offered up for us all? Who else would it be? See, he was. See now, if you if you can see where I'm what I'm saying now, I'm, I'm speaking I'm speaking reverently when I talk about the Lord Jesus Christ, but but nevertheless, I'm using this Bible language. See now, the ram was caught in the thicket. See now, but Jesus was. He in a sense, he was caught in the thicket of God's purpose. See there, he was. He there what. He, he was, uh, he was. There was no other one that 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 God could have that God have, could have chosen. See, mm -hmm. he he was the one that God chose to to put away sin by the sacrifice of Himself. And I'll tell you, He put it away. He put it effectually away, effectually away. Except in this case, we we were the Isaac that went free, and Christ was the was caught in the thicket of God's eternal purpose in him. He was caught by his horns. He was the only one that was strong enough to execute that purpose. See, the horns uh, uh, signify power and, uh, and might. And, uh, so anyhow, if, they, if, that's, if that doesn't, uh, if, that, if you're not able to receive that, well then just, you know, I, we'll, we'll go on to something else. But I, I just say it, uh, it ministers to me anyhow. Christ is the labor for washing. He is the fountain that has been opened for sin and uncleanness. Mm -hmm. See, and he's he actually he is actually the he's actually the fountain and he's the means of unclean of, of cleansing. See, he himself he himself is the means of cleansing. See, Amen. he provides the means of cleansing, but he himself is the means of cleansing. See, he is. See, he is. Christ's flesh is the veil, which has now been by him rent in twain. Christ is the place of entrance into the very presence of God. The humanity of Christ is the veil. That's what, that's what Hebrews says, his flesh, right? Which veil is his flesh? The humanity of Christ is the veil that hides God from the wicked and unbelieving. But for those who have obeyed the gospel, the humanity of Christ is that which reveals God, that God is with us, Emmanuel, and he is in us, and we are in him, and we are hid with Christ in God. Amen. Christ is the altar of incense, Exodus 30, 27. Christ is the sweet incense, that's he is, Exodus 33, 15. Christ is the candlestick of pure gold. He is the exclusive source of illumination. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, I'm the light of the world, right? So there is, he, he is, when it comes to God, see, when it comes to God and understanding God, Christ is the exclusive source of, of, of illumination. Everything else is darkness. Everything else is thick darkness. Thick darkness that can be felt. See, that's, uh, see, but Christ is the source of illumination. Amen. Christ is the golden censer. Hebrews 9, 4. He shall take a censer full of bo uh, burning coals from the uh, fire from the altar 
uh, before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, shall bring it within the veil. So his, so here, so so this, so Christ actually the golden censer. He's bringing the effectuality of his death and sufferings. He's actually bringing it through the veil into the very presence of God. See, this is with the golden censer. See that. Even though Christ was offered only once, yet because of the thoroughgoing of effectuality of his sacrifice for sin, the sweet-smelling savor of Christ's sacrifice for sins continually rises up before God the Father. The golden censer and sweet incense are now being implemented, implemented by our great high priest in the day of salvation. That's uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2. Chapter 6 and verse 2. You know there's a sense in which this is the day of, et of atonement. Mm -hmm. We're now living in the day of atonement. You know, they, uh, under, under the law, the day of atonement was once a year, see? But, but now, now that sins have been put away, see, we are actually living. This is the day of atonement. See, and this is the day when all men may, are, ha, are encouraged to draw near unto God through the Lord Jesus Christ. See, he, the provision has been made. See, so this is the day of atonement. We don't, we, we don't wait for a high, well, we wait for our high priest, right? But we, we come through our high priest. But, but we, uh, it's not a once a year sort of thing anymore. He is the Ark of the Testimony. He is the Ark of the Covenant. He is the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. He is the Ark of the Lord. He is the Ark of God. And the Ark of God's strength. All different names given to the Ark. All the precious things of God's covenant are inside the Ark. In Him are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Yeah. Now think about this. Inside the ark, remember, was the golden pot that had manna, right? And Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the testimony, right? So these, these, are, these are the precious things, right? These are the precious... I'll just tell you, you know this matter of the golden pot that, that had manna? See here, this is the nourishment, see? Mm -hmm. This is the nourishment, the, the bread of life. See, this is... This is where, where Jesus, he said, I, I am the bread of life. I'm the bread of life. See, and, and, he, and he's the one who, who sustains and nourishes his people. And this matter of the tables of the covenant, now he writes, he writes the law of God on your heart. See, he's, do you think the law, the law could be written by a, by a contract or just by, that it could just be, that it would just happen? How, how do you suppose the law gets written? Doesn't, isn't in every other context, isn't writing a personal thing? Well, it is, it, this is, it's written, written personally by the Godhead as well. See, this is, it's, it's written on your heart. This matter of the Aaron's rod that budded, you know, this had, uh, remember when this was, this, this, it was uh, referring to the time when, uh, when there was, when there was, the Lord was going to show who he was going to choose. Remember that? He was going to choose some, like a, he was going to choose the, was, uh, what was the Korah and the rebels? They were the ones that he didn't choose, right? And the ones that he did choose... The, the rod budded for them, right? Now here, let's think about this. Think about this budding, Aaron's budding of the rod. Think about your election. Your election in Christ, see? See, this is clarified in Christ. See? It's in the ark. This is in the ark. It's not outside the ark. This Aaron's rod that budded is inside the ark. It's in, you see what I'm saying? It's, in the, it's inside the ark. See, that's where you, you know, so, you know, if, if you want to see it, if you want to see it, you gotta you gotta look inside the ark. See, you gotta look in. You gotta see it's inside. It's in Christ. See, it's it's actually in Christ where these things are clarified. See what I'm saying? These things are clarified in Christ. Christ is sanctuary. The Lord Jesus Christ Himself is the sanctuary. <coughs> it's eight, uh, Isaiah eight fourteen where that uh, reference is. There was and is no sanctuary great enough for the Lord Jesus Christ to minister in and to be the minister of other than that which he himself is and has provided for by virtue of his own person and work. See, what 
Do you, do you think there's some canvas sanctuary up, flapping up in heaven that Jesus is the minister of? I'll just tell you that isn't the case. See, this is, uh, see, this is uh, the, the sanctuary. Is, uh, this, this is the holy place, but, it's, but Jesus, well, the Bible says that he shall be for a sanctuary, right? So we're not on our own there. He, he shall be for a sanctuary. This work of the Lord Jesus Christ included such things as the humbling of himself uh, and being made flesh, the magnifying of the law and making it honorable, the laying down of his life a ransom for many, the putting away of sin by the sacrifice of himself, and finally being made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. The sanctuary originated in the mind and purpose of God and was divine by, designed by, devised by divine understanding and wisdom on the trestle board of eternity. It is the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus, and it was made by the direction but with full agreement on all three members of the Godhead as they took counsel together, God said, let us make man after our image and after our likeness. Ever think about that? Let us. Let us make man. Let us. He didn't say, let me make man. He said, let us make man. See, so here the members of the Godhead were taking counsel together. And, uh, and of course, they all agreed on that. <coughs> By divine decree and oath was this sanctuary uh, built. I will build... Uh, Declare the decree, thou art my son, this day have I forgot, uh, I begotten thee, and again uh, thou art, thou, uh, the Lord has sworn, and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the Mel of Melchizedek. Let me just uh, try to move through this. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I do, let me just say something. I'm, you know, I'm aware that in the, in, in the same way that it takes energy, for somebody standing up here to minister the Word of God, it takes energy on your part to, to pay attention and listen. I understand that, see? And so I'm, gonna, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to make a concession to that, and uh, I, ho I hope that, you're, uh, I hope that you're, you're thinking about these things. And uh, So anyhow, let, let me proceed here. The nature and involvements of Christ's obedience. For as by one man's obedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. That's Romans 5.19. I'll just tell you, that's, some, that's something that you can, oh, that's a wonderful reality. By the obedience of one. We, we're, we're not resting in our own obedience, we're resting in Christ's obedience. Amen. Now, now we're, we're, we're obedient, see, as obedient children. See, we're, we're as obedient children. See, we're, that doesn't mean we're disobedient. But I'll just tell you, our salvation doesn't rest on our obedience, it rests on Jesus' obedience. Amen. By one man's obedience, many were made righteous. Can you get a hold of that in your spirit? Can you, can you latch on to that? Can, you, can your faith get a hold of that? Amen. Just, I'm asking you. Amen. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered, and being made...